Today, it's time to check out our first board partner RTX 5080 graphics card. And please note, this is not our GeForce RTX 5080 review. That went live yesterday. So if you want a detailed report on how the 5080 performs and what we think of it, then please watch that video first. The focus of this video will be on MSI's new Vanguard graphics card. The Vanguard series is brand new. It's MSI's new enthusiast lineup. So basically that means it's second best only to the Supreme series. And then we have the mainstream cards, which you guys are probably familiar with. That's the gaming trio series. But another new series is for creators called Inspire. And at the entry level, you know, the familiar Ventus range, which hopefully at some point in time we can check out. But what all this means is for now, we have one of the big boys to review in the Vanguard series. So let's get into it. Let's start with the weight and dimensions. In terms of weight, it tipped our scales at 1,936 grams, so it's heavy, but not unusually so for a high-end graphics card. It does measure 357 millimeters long, which is more on the excessive side, as is the width at 66 millimeters, and then the height of 151 millimeters is fairly typical. Now on the front side of the card, you'll see a large fan shroud, which has been predominantly constructed from plastic, but to give it a more premium and I suppose aggressive look, it features three aluminium pieces. There's also fake carbon fiber on display here on some of the plastic, which I think looks pretty cool, even if it is fake. It's a neat looking texture. Then embedded within the shroud are three 105 millimeter fans, and these are the same fans used on the Supreme models. And when compared to the Supreme, the Vanguard LED lighting on the shroud is a bit more discreet. So if you're not massively into your LED lighting, this design will probably appeal to you a bit more. Now the side profile of the card's pretty clean. There's an MSI logo over the fake carbon fiber, which is LED backlit. And at the opposite end, MSI has gotten away with a black GeForce RTX logo, which looks much better than the typical white logos we see on other models. It blends in better. It's not in your face as much. Then towards the middle of the card, you'll find the 12 pin high powered connector, which can be a little bit tricky to access as it is embedded within the card. And to help make sure the power connector is seated correctly, MSI's included an adapter with yellow pin protectors. So if there's any visible yellow once the connector is installed, this indicates that the cable isn't fully inserted and therefore not seated correctly which as we've said in the past, can lead to pretty catastrophic melting issues. They're probably less so on a card such as the RTX 5080, but good to be aware of anyway. Better to be safe than sorry, as they say. Now at the back end of the card, so at the opposite end of the IO panel, the card's very clean. And this is nice to see as a lot of modern cases with that wraparound glass effect exposes this end of the card. So MSI's added some lighting here and a few mounting points for support. Moving around to the IO end of the card, we find a trio of DisplayPort 2.1A outputs and a single HDMI 2.1B output. MSI's only included a two slot bracket here, which should be fine as you really need some kind of GPU support at the opposite end of the card. And MSI has also included mounting points for support. MSI has included a very basic GPU stand. It should work well enough, but it is surprisingly basic given how extremely high end and expensive this product is. And I was a bit disappointed to learn that it's primarily constructed from plastic rather than aluminium. So it does feel very cheap. I guess MSI assumes here that you'll have a high quality case that takes care of this issue for you. But yeah, I would have liked to have seen a much higher quality stand included with such a premium product. Now the Vanguard does feature a nice big back plate which covers the entire card, though there are a few cutouts towards the back end to allow air to pass through. MSI has also added the classic Dragon logo and a few fake carbon fiber decals, which again look fine. You'll also spot the dual BIOS switch here, and again the silent BIOS is the primary BIOS. So overall a nice looking model that looks good from all angles, and more importantly packs all the essentials including dual BIOS support. Now it's time to start pulling it apart to see what's under the hood, and please note all thermal testing, in fact all testing period was conducted before the teardown. And this is the normal procedure. So here, the first step is to remove nine screws that hold on the back plate. And once removed, the rear side of the card is exposed and you start to get a sense of just how massive that heatsink is. And I guess just how compact the PCB area is. 
It's worth noting that unlike the Supreme, the Vanguard doesn't feature any additional structure support, so there's no aluminium cage, for example. And despite that though, the card is extremely rigid. I did my best to try and flex the card with the backplate removed, but failed to get much out of it, which is a good thing, and it means my card should still work when I put it back together. All of that said though, I don't recommend you go and do a flex test on your own $1,000 plus RTX 5080 graphics card, just leave it to me to try and physically break them. But getting back to the teardown, with an additional 12 screws removed, you can detach the PCB from the heatsink. Now the PCB only measures 180 millimeters long, and on board there are a dozen 50 amp power stages for the GPU, and six for the GDDR7 memory. There's independent fan speed control for each of the three fans, along with a few RGB connectors. We can also now lift the heat sink from the fan shroud, and throwing it onto our scales reveals a weight of 975 grams, meaning the heat sink accounts for 50% of the graphics card's weight. So it's certainly a big heat sink, but it's nothing like what we found on the MSI RTX 5090 Supreme, which makes sense as the RTX 5080 is only a 360 watt product. Still, what we have here is a mighty impressive cooler, sporting a 7mm thick nickel plated copper vapour chamber, which makes direct contact with the GPU die. The vapour chamber is also connected to the memory, though MSI has had to use an aluminium heat spreader here to take up the additional space between the chamber and memory chips. In total, eight heat pipes extract heat from the vapour chamber, three of which are 8mm thick, with the rest being 6mm pipes. Earlier I mentioned that this card doesn't feature a separate cage-like structure to improve rigidity, and despite this it's still very solid. Helping achieve this solid design is a mild steel brace behind the fans, which gives the fan shroud an enormous amount of strength. Overall, MSI's RTX 5080 Vanguard looks to be a well-made graphics card, and I appreciate just how easy it is to fully disassemble and then put back together. It's about as easy as it gets, which makes replacing fans outside of the warranty, should one of them happen to die, a lot easier than many other graphics cards that I've tested in the past. So it's a well-designed card that I expect to perform well, so let's go look at that now. Here's a look at how the Vanguard SoC operates after an hour of playing The Last of Us Part 1 at the 4K resolution using the maximum in-game quality settings. These temperatures were recorded in a 21 degree room installed inside an ATX case with the doors closed. Here we see that the GPU hit a peak of just 63 degrees with a very slow fan speed of just 1100 RPM, making the card virtually silent, which is impressive given the roughly 300 watt load. We also saw the GDDR7 memory peak at 62 degrees, so as expected the MSI cooler is working exceptionally well. And if we switch from the silent over to the secondary gaming BIOS, the fan speed ramps up to 1400 RPM, and now we're seeing a peak GPU temperature of just 58 degrees and a peak memory temperature of just 60 degrees. So incredible results there. And now it's time for some overclocking. By default, the Vanguard SoC has a boost clock of 2730 megahertz and operates the memory at 30 gigabits per second. I was able to overclock the cores to 3080 megahertz and the memory to 31.6 gigabits per second. Under load, these settings allowed my Vanguard SoC to reach a stable core operating frequency of 3200 megahertz, which resulted in an average power draw of 315 watts, while the memory ran at 31.6 gigabits per second. This increased the GPU temperature to 58 degrees and the memory to 60 degrees, with an auto fan speed of 1400 RPM, so great results all around there. Now here's a quick look at how the NVIDIA Founders Edition and Vanguard SoC versions of the RTX 5080 compare. Stock the Vanguard SoC is quieter, and despite that it also ran 3 degrees cooler. Then when we switch over to the secondary gaming BIOS, it's slightly quieter than the FE model, but is now able to run 5 degrees cooler, so a pretty big improvement there. Then if we noise normalize both models to 40 decibels, the Vanguard SoC runs 7 degrees cooler. So while both models ran exceptionally cool given the load, the much larger MSI card was superior in terms of cooling performance, and really there should be no surprises there. As for the memory temperatures, the Vanguard SoC was much better than the FE model, running 10 degrees cooler with the stock BIOS, and then 12 degrees cooler using the gaming BIOS. 
And again, when we noise normalized, the MSI card ran 14 degrees cooler, so a huge improvement there. Here we see that the Vanguard SoC was 4% faster than the Founders Edition 5080 and Dying Light 2 at 4K, so a very small but typical performance uplift there from an OC model. Our manual overclock worked quite well though, boosting the Vanguard SoC to 86 FPS, so roughly the same performance as an RTX 4090, making it 10% faster than the stock FE version of the 5080. The Last of Us Part 1 saw the Vanguard SoC pull ahead by a 6% margin when compared to the FE model, and then our manual overclock was good for an additional 8% performance, making it now 14% faster than the FE version, which is a much bigger uplift than I was expecting. The Vanguard SoC was again 4% faster than the FE model, this time in Delta Force, and our manual overclock squeezed out an additional 8% performance, and now the Vanguard SoC was just 6% slower than the RTX 4090. Then lastly we have Marvel Rivals, and here the Vanguard SoC was 5% faster than the Founders Edition 5080. The manual overclock was also very impressive here, boosting performance by a further 10%, which meant the Vanguard SoC was now 15% faster than the stock RTX 5080. So there is a surprising amount of OC headroom on offer here, or at least there was with our particular sample. As for power consumption, the Vanguard SoC wasn't crazy, using 7-9% to more power than the FE model, and as we just saw, that resulted in a 4-5% to performance improvement. So there you have it, the new MSI RTX 5080 Vanguard SoC, and I've got to say I really enjoyed testing this graphics card. The cooling performance was excellent, certainly better than the Founders Edition model, but again, this thing is much larger, so really no surprises there. But what did surprise me, and this is probably more on the RTX 5080 than it is the Vanguard SoC, was the overclocking headroom. Seeing performance gains of anywhere from 10 to 15% over the standard FE model was very impressive, especially given that we've become pretty used to seeing gains of around 5%, maybe up to 10% when manually overclocked. So it looks as though there should be a reasonable amount of headroom with the RTX 5080 for those that like to overclock their graphics card. Of course, this is the first and only RTX 5080 graphics card that I've tested so far, outside of NVIDIA's own Founders Edition model, and I do plan to check out the ASUS ROG Astral RTX 5080 next. Hopefully that video will be online in the next few days. And then we have a few other models from Pallet and Gigabyte to check out. MSI also has over a dozen other RTX 5080 models, which is probably too many, but whatever. I guess at some point in time, we'll get to check out a few more of them, or at least hopefully we do in the near future. I can't guarantee that though, because so far this is the only model I have received from MSI, and there's really no word of any other models coming our way. But yeah, I wouldn't mind checking out the Ventus and maybe the Inspire version for creators. And yeah, there's, like I said, there's a whole heap of really cool looking ones. So that might be something we can do in the future. For now though, that's going to do it for my review of MSI's RTX 5080 Vanguard SoC. But there are other RTX 5080 partner card reviews coming up. So stay tuned. Make sure you subscribe for all of that. If you enjoyed this video, you know what to do. Uh, we have the join button or Patreon if you want to become a member. Signing up gets you access to our exclusive Discord server, monthly live streams, behind the scenes content, Q&A stuff, a lot of cool things there. So check that out if you're interested. But if not, that is perfectly fine. And I would like to thank you for watching this video. I'm your host, Steve. See you again next time.